Applause won't help you. I'm trapped just like you are. <laughs> you ought to be in a toy window somewhere. Right? If you don't have a color set at home, you are missing something. That is the bluest coat. I've seen blue coats. But that thing is alive. <laughs> the salmon pants, yes. right? Yes. And they're swimming upstream. <laughs> And when they get there, they're gonna die. <laughs> Thank you. <Ben. laughs> Anybody else got anything? This is the uh, this is the Tonight Show. Uh, Sixty minutes of uh, snappy patter, witty banter, and in-depth discussions. Now, that's just the commercials. The show, I can't promise anything at all. A lot of them out of town on vacation, right? I understand. Oh, well, you have... If every day was like today in Southern California, everybody in the world would move here. It is yeah. sensational. And afterward, the show tonight. Don't go into Hollywood and go to expensive restaurant. Go to famed restaurant row right here in Burbank. <laughs> A favorite new restaurant just opened up. New bistro. Urfishko's Pump Room. <laughs> Irv has a pump at every table for emergencies, and it's a... <laughs> Went there for lunch today. Oh, really? Oh, really? Tell us about it. Yes. <laughs> I said to the waiter, which course do you recommend? And he said, the course in the Heinlich Maneuver. <laughs> have you been watching a lot of television in the last few weeks? You may have noticed, I've talked about this before. Uh, the television networks are now in what they call the rating period or the sweep periods. They take ratings of every show. So you see a lot of unusual programming that is not your normal stuff, just to get ratings. And they're kind of outrageous. For example, they've got some Thanksgiving holiday specials coming up that are really kind of weird. Uh, for example, Perry Como goes to the Gulf of Tonkin for Thanksgiving. <laughs> they have a... Uh, they have a Leonard Nimoy special. Leonard Nimoy goes in search of a free dinner. <laughs> and the wacky world of Marvin Hamlish. <laughs> there was a little, uh... Could you, could you hide or something? I mean, you're... <laughs> I'm getting a reflection from that outfit. Uh, this just came over the news service a moment Wait, ago. Just now? Yes. President Reagan said he's going to test the radiation level at Diablo Canyon Reactor by sending David Stockman in. <laughs> You notice how the White House really sets trends for the rest of the country? On Sunset Boulevard today, I saw a girl with a sign that says, I accept honorariums. <laughs> That's true. Well, apparently Richard Allen, our national security advisor, is apparently cleared by the FBI of any, any wrongdoing in accepting that $1,000 from a cash from a Japanese magazine. Now it turns out that the president, they announced this the day before yesterday, President Reagan knew about the Allen case, I guess, since when? September? September. And the reason the president didn't say anything about it, he said he received the information, but he didn't accept it. <laughs> <laughs> there goes another lunch at the White House. <laughs> Did you see today that Vice President, former Vice President Walter Mondale is in China? 
You know what is intriguing? Now that he's out of office, we know where Mondale is. But where the hell is George Bush? <laughs> As you know, the president the other night made a major foreign policy speech in which he advised that, uh, well, not advised, he suggested that the Russians and the United States reduce the nuclear arms in Western Europe. And it made them very happy. And the Russians turned it down. They said it was just a trick to get our mind off of David Stockman. And <laughs> apparently Alexander Haig was so steamed at Brezhnev for turning down of that deal that he ordered the Pentagon to defoliate his eyebrows. <laughs> Anyway, we've got a good show for you tonight. We've got two great people here tonight. Miss Suzanne Plachette, one of the finest actresses in the world, and... And one of the greatest voices in the world today, Luciano Pavarotti. Yeah. And how's Barbie? <laughs> A cute outfit for a middle-aged man. I'm going to lead the band. <laughs> Get a whistle and a beanie with that. Well, we thank Ross and Fury and the company for being with us over the past decade and look forward to their being with us for another. In the meantime, tell your cats to watch this. <laughs> Suzanne Pluchette is uh, going to go back to New York and appear on Broadway, where she originally first started along with Richard Mulligan, starring a new play by Bernie Slade called Special Occasions. Would you welcome, please, the very talented Miss Suzanne Plachette. Suzanne Plachette. Damn, you look good tonight. Honey. Thank you, so do you. Thank you. you. Know, that's true. I mentioned that you are going back to where you were originally. Most people think of you just as motion pictures, television, and don't associate you with Broadway because you haven't worked there for a long time. Most people think I was born on the Bob Newhart show. That's I right. Think. First yeah. time. That was it. Oh, that's the new kid on the block. Yeah, but you actually were in what? This four, is five? my fifth or sixth Broadway play. Yeah. And uh, my first, first one I did when I was 10, 10 years old. You, I didn't know that. And I didn't like it at all. I didn't want to be an actress. Did you understand anything about it? You were just there. Yeah, and... it was okay. Wow. As, as a matter of fact, I did a revival of a play that had made Marlon Brando a star. And um, uh, no, a Truckline Cafe, right. which we did first. And I met him at the cast party. And I was in you know, a pinafore and Mary Jane's. <laughs> Even then, I understood his charisma. Yeah. But he didn't understand mine. Yeah. No. Well, you were a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. <laughs> my little pinafore with bunnies on it. You're I still kidding. have it. I save You're... all my clothes. Oh, do you really? I'll probably wear it the next time I come on the show. <laughs> so I still how... have the same knees. How long has it been now since you've been in the, in the theater? About 142 <laughs> years. Oh, come on. The last play I did it. was The Miracle Worker uh, with Patty Duke. Yes. And uh, I, I did uh, Compulsion. The Cold Wind and the Warm, The uh, Golden Fleecing. I did Streetcar with Peter Falk. I didn't know that either. And he was mediocre and I was terrible. <laughs> really? Yeah. Didn't no, we out. were not, it was not the highlight of our career. <coughs> yeah. and, uh, and then I did uh, um, The Miracle Worker. I was beaten to a pulp and came out here. I thought it was a lot easier to work yeah. in film. Making a picture, as you know, is a risk. But doing a Broadway show is even a bigger risk. Yeah. Because you never know until you go in. And, and uh, Now, Peter Strauss, who was here about a year ago, went back to appear in a play and talked about it. Dan, you know, you put in all that time in rehearsals and it goes in and for some reason in three days, with all the best minds and the best writers, it doesn't work sometimes. Well, I had no intention yeah. of go. I was going to go do, I wanted to do a series right. for about the next five years or seven years. And then my game plan was to end my life uh, because certainly after five years in a series, it would be a short life that was left in the theater. And then Burn Slade wrote this play and they right. sent it to me and I read it Saturday morning and closed it and said, oh my, and Tommy said, not good, huh? I said, no, I think it's great. And he said, oh my, because that really changes our lives. Now that means you have to kind of uproot yourself, yeah. go back to New York, get a place to live. 
But you know, you have to do it in stages because you really don't know. I mean, I think it's a wonderful play and some very clever people think it's wonderful, but it's up to the people, you know, finally to make that decision. And you go back, you know, and it's all in stages. Yeah. It's the rehearsal period where you have to live in a hotel. And actually, it's not real lucrative, you know, Broadway. You have to work a lot in film to be able to support yeah, that's kind of a doing myth. your art. That's kind of a myth. A lot of uh, motion picture stars who go back to Broadway certainly don't do it, but they want to get back and, and as they say, Well, I'm, I'm going to be living in a car. In I it. can't put gas in it, and I can't start it. A nice 41 Plymouth that's station wagon. That's where I'll be. We'll come back and talk to us more about this. I better hold something up here. I'll see, not a rubber chicken. <laughs> we always keep a rubber chicken back here, and we don't, don't know how this started. Do you know why we have a rubber chicken back Just here? Just if everything else fails, we have <laughs> Somebody once said, in, in, if you really get desperate, have a rubber chicken nearby. It'll always get a laugh. And it's always there. And maybe time soon to use it. <laughs> Next sore throat, just say clap, say Clarissa. <laughs> First down, clipping, personal foul. So, have, so you found, have you found a place to stay in New York? No, we're going to stay in a hotel temporarily and then yeah. uh, just play it as it lays. It's a, it's a wonderful, very touching play. Yeah. It's a two-character play. And it's a story about... Well, Richard Mulligan is the fellow, yes. the wonderful actor who's in soap. And SOB. Very talented, also from Broadway. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see if uh, we're considered Broadway actors coming home or, or Hollywood people who are interlopers. Is there a, um, a kind of a um, chauvinistic attitude in the theater? There used to be that anybody who did motion pictures was, I mean, you know, not a true actor in the sense. Well, so many of us have overlapped, I think, yeah. in, the, in the last 20 years. It's changed. It's more like England, where good actors just work in every medium. I mean, yeah. it's so easy to get back and forth now. and. Even when you do features, they're never done here. You, you work all over the world. Yeah, have you ever, when you're in a play, gone up in your lines? Uh, I never went up in my lines, but I was on stage with Maureen Stapleton. Going up in I, your I lines just, means you just You forget your lines. It's every actor's you blow, nightmare. You blow, or you... And uh, I, I go off stage, and Maureen is on stage, and Eli Wallach is supposed to enter immediately. And no Eli. He's not... And nowhere to be seen or heard. And I'm standing in He's supposed to come through a door and come into... Yeah. The... And Maureen started fluffing pillows, and finally she That's opened awful. the door to the room where I supposedly had just gone and said, is there anything you need? And I said no, and slammed it in her face. <laughs> <laughs> and she was out there alone. He came running in. He had been watching himself on television in his dressing room. And just missed the cue. And was late for the cue. I've only done one Broadway play. It was Tunnel of Love years ago, and I filled in for Tom Ewell for about four months. And it's, it's, it's a satirical comedy, and there's three acts. And one thing happened, it almost it petrifies you for a moment. One of the, there was only four or five people in the play, and there, there's a scene. It all takes place mainly in a living room, an apartment. And one of the gals in the play walked in in the second act, and she wasn't supposed to be there <gasps> thinking it was the third act. Oh, God. And I'm having this, Jordan Bentley was the name of the actor. And we're having this long discussion about it. You know, <laughs> if my wife finds out and so forth and so on, all of a sudden, this lady walks oh my onto the stage, and she's there. And she doesn't realize for a moment that, and luckily, or just in panic, I don't even know what her name was in the play, but I said, Helen, Bill and I are having a discussion now. For God's sakes, can't you let us just finish? Oh, and uh, she'll be home in a minute. And the girl just uh, went, boom, and out the door. <laughs> I, couldn't, I didn't know what to do. You're clever. I don't think the audience ever knew. You know, I think the great thing so is... There's nothing you could do. When it happens, I mean, I, we, ten, ten people once on stage just broke up. If the audience knows what's happening and you're with it and you're in it together, right. you know, and I, I, I'm really not scared anymore because I'm right. grown up enough to turn around and say either I'm up or I'm in trouble and yeah. we're in this together, I think. Yeah. What you are know. you going to do with this dog of yours? You have a dog that oh. has an IQ of about two. Oh, I mean, no. No, you've, got, oh, you've mentioned no. you've got a dumb dog. You can't train she's, him to do anything. She's just her own person. She dances to a different drummer. <laughs> yes, all. but I mean... <laughs> she's staying with Grandma and Grandpa. Until we're, yes, oh, that until must we're make located. Grandpa and Grandpa very happy. Yeah. They, uh, <laughs> but the dog is not trained to do anything, as I understand. Well, she has these emotional problems occasionally. Oh, we all do. That Little problems. gift she left me on her fur oh, rug come the on other now. day. And you're going to take her to Grandpa's yeah, house? Yeah, she's oh, going to Grandpa's oh, nice. house. Yeah, we'll bring her to New York later. Yeah. That doesn't I'm, bother you, leaving the. It does. Yeah. It bothers me leaving here. You know, it's very... Do you know they have doggy hotels out sure here? Sure they do. I sent her to camp They call last them hotels. Time. You can go... Doggy. I have kennel cars. And this they will time. read the mail? If you. Now, so help me. So help Johnny, me. Johnny, you you're can not call. a dog person. You can call 
That's on right. the phone That's and right. talk to your pet while you're out of town. My dog writes to me and I write to my dog. Get out of here. Bro. She writes not as well as I do. <laughs> yeah. She has a lovely little style, I think. See, if I don't read the letter, has she written it? If the tree doesn't fall in the forest. Forest. There is no sign. That's right. We're not going to start on that. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break here. Then we have Luciano Pavarotti with us tonight, which should be thrilling. Would you wait right where you are? We'll be back. My next guest is, uh, is considered by many people to be the finest tenor in the world today. He's just finished a movie called Yes, Giorgio, which will be out next May. His latest album is called La Gioconda. And he's going to be playing in his own tennis tournament, <laughs> the San Francisco Tennis Club, November 21st and 22nd for the Opera Guild. Here's his autobiography called My Story, and it's a great thrill to have Mr. Luciano Pavarotti here. Wonderful to see you again. My great pleasure. Yeah, I was, I was reading your book. I was reading this at home. My wife subscribed to this magazine, Attenzione. Attenzione, Attenzione yes. an Italian magazine, and there's a wonderful article. Oh, do you know this is in here in this issue? Yeah. They told me it's a very good article, but it's yeah. the first time I see the, the thing myself. Yeah. You got, you got a tennis tournament? <laughs> Coming up? Uh -huh. Yes. You know, we talked about your <laughs> we talked about your game the last time you were here. You you said you uh, you like to get at the net. Well, I cannot run behind. Right. <laughs> and uh, uh, at the net, uh, when I was young, I was a volleyball player. Oh. And uh, very easy to squeeze the ball when you have the net here. Right. <laughs> instead to have the net there. <laughs> And a big racket. Of course, the the ball must be very easy because if it's difficult, yeah, you hit right. Yeah. <laughs> do you uh, do you get nervous when you play in a tennis tournament? Not for yeah. one minute. It's probably the only place where I am not nervous because I have nothing to lose. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you? People ask me often, even on this show, as long as I've been doing it, do you get nervous when you do it? And I say yes, occasionally. Do you still get nervous when you have? Uh, you're singing. Uh, first of all, thanks for coming down from San Francisco. You're uh, in Aida in San Francisco yeah. currently. Uh, do you still have uh, opening night jitters or particular nights when maybe you don't feel that you're well, your invoice? In, in this particular uh, Aida in San Francisco, I was nervous because it was my first. And of course, I thought then the second and the third to be less nervous. But it, it was the same. Still Absolutely, yes. And it's going to be the same all the night. 
Yeah. Yes. Do you um, do you have any uh, tricks or, or things you go through? M many people in the entertainment business are superstitious. They have little. Some people take very many deep breaths backstage. They uh, they have little things that kind of psych them up. Well, I do these. I am looking for a bended nail. A bended yes, nail. Yes. Because we say in Italy, then is good luck. And uh, I'm religious. Then I even uh, cross myself. Cosy. And, but I am still nervous. And still get nervous. Yes. <laughs> there was a... I want to ask you something. I, I was reading about it in this article, um, where some critics have said that opera stars such as yourself shouldn't appear on shows like, like The Tonight Show. Uh, I guess they felt, some people felt, that it was uh, in some way demeaning uh, opera itself, and I, I just don't believe that, because I think this show, over the years, and we've had many stars here, uh, opera stars, uh, where people not, might not have been acquainted with them before. Well, I... Do you I, find that among some critics? I found, then, for me, is a privilege to be here. Well, and it's I, our privilege. And I think it should be a privilege for everybody. Yeah. Well... <laughs> but there are those curious, you know. That's very nice of you to say. But you know, Luciano, there are those purists, I guess, like there are purists in the theater who think this is not the proper form or, or so forth. And I, I don't know why, because when, as you said yourself, when you can get in front of an audience and reach millions of people in one performance, uh, as you said, and play to more than Caruso ever played to in his entire lifetime, in it's two a, minutes you reach those great, people. It's a great, great advantage for us, and more than for me particularly, for the world of the opera. And television, I think, did help the world of the opera to become, in the last uh, 10 years, from the Cinderella of the entertainment where we were, uh, a normal form of uh, entertainment. Right. And I think television is one of the most important help. And you, I think, uh, yeah. you are one of the most popular, then you take your deduction. Yeah. In the, in the article, I get the impression that you seem to have such a joy in your work when you're in front of an audience, uh, in, in singing, uh, that you, uh, I think you said, but you're, you're pretty happy growing up as a, I'm very as a happy, youngster. Yeah. Most of the time you're happy. I think so. I was a very little wild animal, <laughs> and I really, I really mean that, because I was born in a house very close to the country. It was the last house, and after was all country. And uh, I did grow up free. I remember then my grandmother, because my mother, she was working. And she, she take care of me, and she just called me up uh, for lunch and for dinner. Otherwise, she always let me play with the other children right. uh, in the free land, defending me a voice when the other day were attacking me because it's a little battle like you can imagine. <laughs> and I have great memory of freedom. That's nice. Yes. You're now working with other young singers because when you, I think it was some 20 or 20-some years ago, where you won your first, uh, I guess, operatic uh, audition or, or yeah. contest, now you, you are involved in some of those for other young singers today, are you not? Yes. Uh, it is exactly 20 years that I am singing on the stage, the 29th of April it was, and I thought to celebrate in that way uh, the event, for me, at least it is, uh, trying to make a competition for young singer in Philadelphia. And Philadelphia helped a lot. Right. And uh, we have 19 winners, and they are going to appear with me, and we try to put the performance on television for the young singer. That's wonderful. Yes. That's wonderful, yeah. We'll do this, and we'll be back in just a moment with Luciano. Would you favor us again yes. by singing another song? Non 
Le candide, la leggeranno intorno in nero crino. 